Hi YouTube, welcome to Pagan Perspective. This is Megan, aka Spirit Street. Today is Thursday, um, so I am switching days. If you are a regular viewer, I am now on Thursdays. Um, and I wanted to give a shout out to our wonderful new substitute hosts. Uh, they did a great job this past week, so if you haven't, check out all their videos from last week. They're really awesome, and I look forward to you know, hearing what they have to say and having them be a part of the channel. I think it's really awesome. So aloha to, uh, to all our new subs. And yeah, so this week we are talking about open circles, closed circles, public ritual, um, and sort of like tips and things like that for basically being involved in a public way in the pagan community. So um, I actually kind of have a lot to say on this, but I'm going to try and keep it kind of short and sweet because I feel like a lot has been covered um, with the other host this week that's been really awesome. So biggest thing is if you have been watching me for a while, <laughs> you know that I am a very big <laughs> proponent of getting out there and um, being a part of your community. Now, does that mean that everyone can? Absolutely not. Not everybody is in the position to be able to. Not everybody has a community that's near them. Not everybody might feel safe in their community. So there's all sorts of reasons why if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. Like, absolutely, you have to do what is important for you and what what has you feeling safe and confident and happy, like 100%. That being aside though, if none of that applies to you, and you're just interested, I do recommend it because I think that a lot can be gained by being a part of your pagan community. And so one of the ways to do this is by going to public ritual, okay, public circles. Um, and honestly, I think the first thing that I would do actually beyond just signing up for a public circle in your area is try to find either classes or events. So a lot of different areas will have like psychic fairs and marketplaces. Um, pagan prides are huge. Um, they're not everywhere, but they are in a lot of places now. So things like that can be really good way to kind of dip your toe in and get used to things a little bit first and to meet some people. And then you get to find out about other rituals that might be being done. And you might even be able to find out about some closed ones. So everyone's done a really good job of talking about the difference between open and closed circles um, and how, you know, open to the public means anyone can come in. Closed kind of differs depending on your definition. It could be just invite only, it could be a specific coven or grove, it could be, you know, friends of friends, right? That sort of thing. Um, so one of the things that I like to do when I attend a public ritual is I like to make sure that I have an idea of who's running it first. So if I know who's running it, then I have a better sense of how it's going to go, kind of what the path is that uh, the foundation of the ritual is going to be based on. Um, and that really helps decide for me whether or not it's something I want to um, participate in or get involved in. I really recommend also looking into um, any of sort of the open, um, I mean, in, in my area on the East Coast when I was there, it was a lot of like Renaissance fairs and things like that would have, also have a lot of pagan things going on. So we had like the New Hampshire Renaissance Fair um, was always right around May and like depending on what weekend, but they would always do a Beltane festival and a ritual. Um, and they would do it after close of fair for anyone who wanted to be there. But it was really beautiful and really great. And I, and I knew everybody who was, um, who was running the ritual and, and I got to participate uh, quite a few times in it as well um, over the years. <laughs> but what I like so much about that is it allowed me to kind of combine two things that I already loved and it let me get to know the people who are running it more um, and that creates that personal connection so that you can feel more safe. Um, so if you go to my personal channel and I'll put the link below, I actually was able to video a Samhain ritual um, from a festival kind of or a I guess a marketplace or a fair I don't know what you would call it <laughs> um, 
in New Hampshire called Celebrate Samhain and it's beautiful. It has workshops and vendors and they do a Samhain ritual every year. And what's awesome about it is um, Lyrian uh, Aptar, she was the priestess who was doing it and she let me, um, she let me film the whole thing um, and put it up, which I was really, really grateful for because I feel like there's so many people who don't get a chance uh, to, to see public ritual. And it was a really beautiful one. It was really special. She's uh, amazing. And um, yeah, so I will put the link below so that you can check that out. And um, I, I think that, you know, the more that we can encourage kind of that community, I think it can only help us and only better us as a community. And now that's to say I do think there's responsibility there. As we grow and as there is more public events and more things happening, it's a responsibility on all of us to ensure the safety of everybody who's there. We cannot allow for, you know, anything anything to go badly to somebody. No one can feel discriminated against or harassed. No one, absolutely no one can be hurt at these events and it has to be very safe. It has to be a safe place for people. That being said, I think that having that community where people know they could be safe would be amazing. And I really believe that the pagan community could open so many doors to helping people if we had more of these things. And the way that we're gonna get more of them is if A, more people get involved because all of these things require volunteers and time and energy and all of that. So you need to donate your time and energy to be able to make these things happen, right? And to make sure that people are safe. I know for some of our events on the East Coast, we actually had um, security people and they would have armbands and so that if anyone was feeling unsafe anytime, you know, somebody was giving somebody a hard time or something like that, you could go up to one of those safety people and you could let them know and you had, and they had a visibility so that you knew you were protected and it was okay. Uh, because sometimes too, when we do these events in public, you know, there is the public walking by, especially if we're in a park or something like that. And there have been times when um, we've had protesters come and things like that. And so it can feel really unsafe. And I've always volunteered some of my services as well. Um, as I've mentioned before on this channel, if you're new, I'm a therapist. And so if people are having a really hard time and just need, um, you know, some help in the moment, um, not obviously ongoing, but in the moment, um, just sort of uh, emergency basis, I'm there. Uh, so that's always been something that I think is really important. And I, I really encourage us to try to make our community great. I think that one of the reasons why, you know, churches, like the, the mainstream churches, if you will, why they end up being so popular, right? Why, I mean, there's a whole host of reasons, but one of them is that as human beings, we are social creatures. doesn't mean everybody is, right? This is a generalization and not everybody is. However, in general, human beings tend to be social and we seek out that social bond, right? And so churches give people a place to be social. They give people a community, which is something that is sort of innate in many of us, not all, but many. And I feel like the more that the pagan community can do that, I think we'll be offering something to those that are seeking that. I know that some of my pagan friends who didn't have that community, they went and they sought out places like the Unitarian Universalist um, and other churches like that, where they could feel community while still practicing their pagan beliefs. And that's great and it's awesome. My hope is that we don't even need that eventually, that we could have a pagan community that's thriving in our own way, where we don't have to necessarily have it be this mandated doctrine church type stuff, but that we could have more of these community events um, that get people together and they feel like they have community. One of the things that I think is wonderful, though it has not taken off uh, as much as I would love it to, and um, and I certainly, once I'm able to, I will, I'll be uh, involved, um, but there is a, organization called Spiral Scouts and they're basically sort of like a Girl Scout Boy Scout thing but for 
uh, nature-based and earth-based paths. Um, and not necessarily just those paths, but that's the leaning that it goes. And I love that idea. I love the idea of kids being able to get out in uh, nature and learn about plants and learn about animals and learn about you know, the world that they live in and ancient wisdom that they were not going to get in school. You know, we're not going to learn about, you know, medicinal properties, you know, of mugwort um, in public school. Um, or if you are, let me know because that's, that's a pretty cool public school. <laughs> uh, so I just think that it would be really, really neat to have that uh, blossom and grow. And uh, the more types of things like that, I think are really going to be beneficial. So I applaud you if you're doing public or a closed ritual. My biggest thing, my tips and tricks, the biggest thing that I would say is um, spread the word as much as you can, but be prepared for safety. That would be my number one thing is um, the one, the events that I have seen go, go over the absolute best um, have been people who are very prepared, um, people who have run ritual before, um, who know what they're doing uh, and you know, bring them in. They're, there's so many mentors out there who are willing to help. Have things written down so that you're not trying to find the words. Have everyone who's, if, if quarters are part of your ritual, have it written down for the people who are calling and give it to them ahead of time so they can practice. You know, make sure that you're in a space where everyone can hear you. Um, if everyone can't hear you, then use some sort of microphone right? Um, also make sure that you have accessibility. I think that's super important. There are so many people in our community who need, um, you know, different accessibility options. And the more that we can offer that, the better, whether that is a chair or stools, um, right? Or, or to have um, the ability to not have flashing lights in their face, right? So if the more that we can think about accessibility, and one of the best ways to do that, because, and to be honest, we can't always prepare for every single accessibility out there. Sometimes it, you're going to miss it. So the best way to do that is to actually put something like on flyers and things like that is, you know, please, you know, if there's anything you need accessibility, please don't hesitate to contact us. You know, we will accommodate you. So make sure that people know they can talk to you and give them a place where they can go speak to you and make sure that you respond to them and make sure that you're really communicative. That's the biggest thing. The, the next biggest thing is make sure that you are engaged and communicative with the people who are coming to your events. Make sure that you're you know, giving them the right information. Make sure they know where to park. Make sure they know when things are um, you know, when starting and ending and you know, what is considered appropriate dress, right? Like if you're out, you know, in the middle of the woods where it might be really muddy, tell people to wear, you know, closed toed shoes or something like that. Um, or make sure that people understand, like if it is out in the middle of the woods where there could be roots, you know, if you have somebody who has mobility issues, you know, make sure that, you, that they're really aware of that when they're headed out there um, before the event even starts. So really being um, a good communicator, I think, um, would really go a long way into helping. And then also the events that I've seen that have gone off the smoothest and the best and have been wonderful have had um, you know, a security team. Um, and it's just people who are really dedicated, who are sensitive, who are understanding, but also willing to stand up and and say, you know, I'm going to protect you right now, um, and that is that's really essential. And to make sure that everyone there knows who they are, whether that's an armband or something that they're, um, you know, visibly showing that, and and people know where to go find them and that they're around. Um, it really just enhances the feeling of safety for people, and um, and it's always made events I'm at much better. So. Those would be my tips and tricks, and I think this has gone on so, so long. I know <laughs> I wanted to keep it short, but I couldn't. There's so much to say about this. So, um, yeah, so I love you all, and um, I hope that you have a wonderful uh, weekend, and congratulations, subs, and I'm so looking forward to working with you and hearing everything you have to say. So, as always, guys, I will be signing off, and blessed be and aloha. Bye.